Hi oh guys, welcome back. So it's been a little while since I've managed to get out and do a bit of filming and a bit of testing, but luckily I did manage to sneak in a couple of hours last week. We've done a little bit of extra testing on the channel before. We've used this one here. We did some groups downrange, adjusted the cone, and we could see that it was actually moving the groups around. So it was doing something. But today I want to do something a little bit more involved. This is probably the most expensive airstripper in existence at the moment. This is the factory fitted Air Arms XTI-51. You can only currently get this on the rifle. It was designed and developed by the Air Arms team and their team shooters, and apparently it's pretty good. Now, I'm very happy so far with the performance that I'm getting from the XTI-50, but I am super curious as to whether or not I can actually use the airstrip itself to manipulate the group sizes down range. So, the long and short of it is we're going to see whether or not it works, but what we are going to do is we're going to shoot a load of different groups, all of the different stripper settings on here. So basically adjusting the distance that the cone is away from the barrel crown. We'll see whether or not we can manipulate the group size, the sight picture, and ultimately just see whether or not it works. It's certainly a cool looking bit of kit, but I'm hoping that we can use this to actually tighten up the groups. Whether or not that works, I do not know. So let's get everything set up and I'll see you at the farm. Right then guys, we're here. So we're just under 25 yards, the usual spot. It's quite windy, so I've tucked us out of the way. I'd like to have pushed it out a bit further, but I want to try and get as clean results as possible. You can see on the windicator stick there that the breeze is coming towards us a little bit. So it will open up the groups a little bit. These are the JSB shorts. We've used these before. They're a particularly good batch. They're not the best batch that I've tried of exact through this, but they're pretty good. At this sort of range, we should get some really nice tight little groups. So it's at factory standard at the moment. It's at 4.5 millimeters, the cone from the end of the crown. We're just gonna run off a couple of control groups. Then I'm gonna remove it entirely. So I'm gonna take out the actual stripper cone, do a couple of groups, and then we'll refit it. We'll start at one mil, two mil, three mil. We'll have already had a four and a half mil, and then we'll do five mil and see whether or not there's actually any difference. What we might need to be careful of is each time we make an adjustment to that cone, I might just have to take a few shots off of the target because where we'll have been leaning on the barrel, moving the cone around, there's a chance that we may have moved the point of impact. So we'll just have to be a bit mindful that maybe the first couple of shots that we take after an adjustment may be a little bit off, but not entirely sure. So get the GoPro on and we'll see how it pans out. Eh? Keep an eye on this little windicator stick here. You can see that that breeze is flying around. It's swirling around in here a little bit, but hopefully it shouldn't make too much of a difference to affect the results. All right. What will be interesting as well is when we make adjustments to the cone, whether or not the sight picture changes, whether it gets a little more jumpy or anything like that, whether it gets even more still. Right, five of those I think that'll do. We've used these before, we know that it can do a bit tighter groups even more so than that when I'm um, on the ball a little bit and it's not quite so windy. So we'll leave it at that, we're going to remove the cone now. Now it's going to be interesting because my hand shirts, I use that without an air stripper. There's no stainless outer shroud on that barrel. All it's got is the um, outer carbon shroud. That's just purely cosmetic. So we may well find that this shoots better. It might shoot worse. Don't know whether these first couple may be a little bit wayward. We'll soon find out. Oh, there's a bit more movement in the sight picture without the cone in there. Guess that's to be expected. It's not peeling that blast of air away from behind the old pellet. Well, that's moved a bit. That's kind of where I was expecting it might well end up, so. That may well have been me wobbling a little bit there. Okay, so no cone then. We get this as last shot. The group is significantly larger than with it set at its 4.5 mil. Right, that's annoying. I've just had it set at one mil, just shot the groups with that on the card, and the GoPro didn't turn on, so that's a bit annoying. Um, I'll show you, it. basically we've had a slight movement in the point of impact. The groups are largely the same as the four and a half mil, marginally bigger. The sight picture felt, to be honest, you couldn't really discern a difference between four and a half mil and at one millimeter. GoPro is definitely on now. I've just did my main group and it was a little bit of scattering. You could see that it was sort of walking back down to where it was. So in the time that I'm actually adjusting the cone, it's obviously moving the barrel just a tiny bit, two or three shots and it's back where it should be. Now on the right side of the card, I will show you it. I put a couple of extra shots over that side just to double check that it was back where it ought to be. And it was. So we're now at two millimeters. Let's see how this one goes. Nice. Let's hope they will stay like that, shall we? Right, 
right, so it looks like at two millimeters it's actually grouping slightly better than it does at the factory recommended 4.5 that's interesting because that's quite a lot closer than conventional wisdom would suggest that you have it set nice okay so that's definitely a bit tighter than the four and a half mil now there is a possibility that every different brand of pellet every different batch of pellet may have its own unique stripper setting to get the best of it hopefully we can redo this test with some different batches and stuff down the line and we'll make a note of all of their optimum stripper settings and see whether there is something in it all right three mil hard to say whether that was me or the wind that gust had just picked up as i let that one go Right, so the two of those are literally stacked. You can barely even tell that there's any torn fibers from that second shot. So there is a definite point of impact movement. Oh, I had to open it up a tiny bit, didn't it? That's just the paper torn up there. That's gone through the same, oh, that's good. Pretty tricky judging this wind. I'm just trying to get the shots off between the gusts. So we've got as consistent results as possible. Okay, so the actual paper's torn up a little bit. The actual group itself is pretty tight. So, right, we're gonna go to four millimeters now. Okay, we're at four millimeters now. It's a good job I trust this rifle because the GoPro, we're basically skimming past the edge of it where it's sighted in its tripod at the moment. Right, so that's almost bang on where the 4.5, the factory setting was. And this is up to the sort of distance that I would normally be setting strippers. It's quite interesting that the two and the three were pretty good. <laughs> Trying to concentrate. It's been a long old day. It's been red hot today. I'm a little bit puffed out. I can feel my pulse. I can see my pulse moving. It's pretty hard to keep your concentration and breathing in check whilst you're filming, you know, especially then trying to juggle the breeze. Right, that one went with a thud. I wonder if we've um, shot through the lead backstop. Don't know, let's go and have a quick look at what we've got so far. All right, there we go then. So that's your four mil control group. That's about eight millimeters across, perfectly acceptable in the wind. No stripper, opened up quite a lot. Now the sight picture was a little bit jumpy. One mil, this was the one that typically the camera didn't pick up. So it started up here and walked its way back down. Now that's probably where I'd nudged the barrel, actually manhandling it to adjust the stripper. So I then put these shots up over the top here because I thought, right, it probably just settled in. Put a few shots up here, probably about the same sort of average group. Two mil and three mil, they're the tightest two so far. In fact, they're tighter than the four and a half mil factory spec. Four mil, hmm, not too bad, actually. I think that really, I could have done a bit better than that. I pulled this one over here, so a bit annoying. However, it definitely looks like the shorter gaps, the smaller gaps, potentially better with these pellets than the factory specification. So we'll soon find out. We're going to the five millimeters, and then we should have the whole lot. Yeah, interesting. Right, okay, so we're out of five mil. So last one, let's see what happens here, shall we? The shot cycle actually feels slightly still up with it out of five mil. Potentially the air's getting more chance to expand behind it and get stripped away. Oh, that one moved a little bit. Let's just run another group out, give them a chance to settle in and see what happens. Didn't feel completely happy that it wasn't me wobbling off that one. It's a bit late in the day for accurate shooting for me. Well, the results are inconclusive. Although we're relatively sheltered, we've got a little bit of wind swirling around down here, but pretty much all of them groups are tight, but we can see that it does actually work because without it, them groups are twice the size, which is strange. It'll, um, we need to look into that really, I think. Maybe we'll get the whole stripper off in another video, just run it with a bare barrel like I do on the Anschutz and see whether or not 
the actual pellet selection and the pellet preferences have changed because that would be quite interesting. So we've got a bit to look at. I'll see you back at home. Right then, guys, we're back. Well, that was quite fun. It was pretty tricky conditions. I tried my absolute hardest to be as consistent as I could in that wind, just trying to be as accurate as I physically could. And I'll be honest, these groups here at the closer settings, I couldn't have bettered that with anything on the day. That's ridiculously tight. They're under six mil outside edge to outside edge. So to be honest, what more are you going to be able to get out of an air rifle at all? So the air stripper itself is definitely working. Unfortunately, when we removed the cone, the wind was up at its highest at that point. So I think we've got a slightly artificially enlarged group with the wind there i can't quite see i can't quite work out why the group is as large as it is i was expecting that it would be maybe marginally bigger the sight picture felt slightly different of course it's not having the air blast diverted away but through all of the other settings there was really only maybe a negligible difference in the sight picture or anything like that unusual i mean conventional wisdom would suggest that as per factory spec you have your stripper cone set around 4.5 mil for a 177 and around 5.5 mil for a 22 you know that's sort of fairly common knowledge but i'm very surprised that at these shorter distances or the shorter gaps that it did as tight a groups as these i mean that's ridiculous really i literally couldn't have bettered that with anything and i think these are probably the tightest groups that i've shot with the xti on film thus far so definitely a bit more testing to do of course this is the first time we've done this test we do need to test this with some more pellets so i'll probably come back and redo it with some of the jsb heavies we've used on the channel and i specifically want to test it with no cone to see whether or not this is just an anomaly from the day of filming or whether or not it actually does shoot slightly larger groups without it i mean the whole thing was designed and developed and built to run a stripper from the very sort of drawing board so of course they've made something that works and it does i mean you've only got to look at this slot here a couple of these were a little bit wayward after i'd adjusted the cone now i think that's probably where i was having the rifle stood up on its butt trying to adjust it obviously you end up moving the barrel marginally it would probably be unwise to go straight out after adjusting it and take it out onto some targets or whatever maybe a shot or two just to get it back where it needs to be is probably a wise bet but overall the groups that we've shot i'm really really happy it would be great if i can get another one of these and we'll see if we can cobble it onto the 9015 because as you know that runs a bare barrel I've never managed to get a stripper to work on that but i think this one it certainly seems to perform pretty well so i'd love to have a go with one of these on the 9015 and see whether we can um, fine tune that a bit more but overall, the performance we got, yeah, really good. Them um, exact shorts, as we've used them before, they're a fantastic pellet, really well made, and they absolutely go where you point them. So overall, yeah, really quite happy. It was nice to get out. It's been super busy on the farm. I've been really busy in the workshop as well. So hopefully it won't be too long before I can get back out again because I've got some more other cool stuff to do. The grass is now cut as well, so it won't be long and I can start prepping us a range for 100 yards. So hopefully in the next video or two, we'll start pushing the ranges out even further. So that'll do it for this one, guys. I'll see you later.